Hi guys and girls and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to be creating a script for our third person controller. But first I want to show you how it's gonna look. Of course you can control your character like this. And animations play accordingly. I wanna give props to Dapper Dino. I saw his tutorial on uh, a RPG character controller. And I really liked it so I decided to use it in this series. And make a few ad adjustments. First thing you'll need to do whenever making this character, you need to set up the player. It should have a capsule collider for colliding with boxes, walls, floor, pretty much anything. You'll need to figure out your settings for uh, the collider, but mine should look something like this. Once you figure that out, now you can add a character controller. And again, if you use the capsule collider, it should be it should be the same settings as up here, so you can just copy them. All right, once you have this, you'll need to create your script. So I'll just go ahead and create a new C sharp script, call it like uh, move movement controller or something like that. And now you can drag it on to your character and open it up. All right, first we'll need a couple of variables. We will need a character controller variable, the one that's on our player. If you don't know what this equals null means, you don't have to do it, it does it automatically, but I just like it more this way. We'll also need a private animator. Animator. We're going to move using a character controller and we're going to play the animations using the animator. So what we need to do is assign those variables because we don't know which character controller to use and which animator to use. So I'll just go controller. Uh, equals to get component character controller and animator equals to get component animator. So basically, all we did is we from the script we went onto the same game object and found the character controller on that object and find the found the animator on that object. I'll also create a couple of more uh, variables that we will need. We'll need a private variable, private float for movement speed. And I'm gonna set that to like three, or maybe two. I kind of like it when it's a bit slower. Serialize field just means that this uh, variable stays private, but we can see it in the inspector. So if you take a look at our uh, script in the inspector, you can see that we can we have a variable here. We'll need a private float for uh, current speed, we need a private float for speed, smooth, velocity, I'm gonna set that to zero also. We'll need a private float for speed, smooth, time, I'm gonna set that to 0 0.1. We'll need a private float for rotation speed, I'm gonna set that to 0 0.1 also. And we'll also need a private float for gravity, I'm gonna set it to like 3. If you don't know what uh, we'll use these for, just keep watching the video because I don't know either. I'm just kidding, of course I know. I'll explain everything later. We'll also need our camera as a variable. So I'll just create a private transform uh, main camera transform. And I'm going to set it to null and then in the start method right here I can go ahead and say main cam transform or main camera transform equals to camera dot main dot transform and that's it now we can access our camera from here now we can access our camera and we can get the direction that we want to move in because we will move according to the camera right so now we'll need to uh, create our private void update in which we will move and you can do it all in the update function but it's always much cleaner to create a new function called move or something uh, and then doing all the code in here and just in the update function just saying move like this. So if you want to move of course first we need a way of telling the character controller which buttons we're pressing. If you go to edit and then project settings and then go to input you can find all the accesses that we can use to um, tell the controller which buttons we're pressing. We have the horizontal which is left and right we will use that. And we have the vertical, which is down and up. In our case, it's actually front, front and backwards. You can see that uh, those buttons are W and S. 
or up and down arrows and here it's A and B or left and right arrows. Right, so we'll create a vector2. Vector2 is a variable that holds two floats. A vector3 would be position for example, three floats. A vector2 only holds X and Y. We'll call this movement input and it will be equal to a new vector2 and the x value in this vector will be our input dot get x is raw horizontal so this value will change every frame according to the buttons we, fret, we press and the y value will be input dot get x is raw vertical if you don't know what's the difference between uh, get axis and get axis raw you can go check it out in the api but basically this doesn't add any kind of smoothing because we will add smoothing by ourselves so now we can tell which buttons we're pressing and we'll also need to create a few more variables we'll need vector3 for forward so we can tell which direction is forward and that will be equal to our main camera transform dot forward as i already said we're moving according to the camera so forward is actually the camera's forward We'll also need a vector 3 dot right, which is equal to main camera transform dot right. So the right of the camera. Pretty simple. Also, what we want to do is we want to normalize these values, and I'll try to explain that to you right now. So if we move the character, so if we try and move the character to the right, we'll move it to the right, and it will move with the speed of one. And if we try to move it forward, it will move with the speed of one also. But if we try to move it diagonally, it will move with a bit larger, something like 1.2 or something. I'm not actually sure about that, but you get the point. You'll move faster if you go diagonally, and that's not something we want. So we have to normalize those values. So whenever we're moving forward, we're moving 1. Whenever we're moving right, we're moving 1. And that whenever we're moving diagonally, we're also moving 1. With the speed of 1. That's what I'm trying to say. So what I'll do is I'll go forward that normalize. And that's a function, so you need to add these these two. Right dot normalized, or normalized. Sorry. Once you did that, once you did that, we'll need to create two more variables. I'll need a vector three for desired move direction, and that will be equal to forward times movement input dot y plus right times movement input dot x and then we'll multiply or we'll just normalize everything dot normalized like that so basically the move direction we want to move in is the forward axis so we go to the camera check which way is forward and then we multiply that by our input dot get axis uh, vertical so if we are pressing the W button, for example, we will multiply it by 1. If we're, we're not pressing it, then we'll multiply it by 0. So if we're pressing, with, pressing it, we will move. If we're not, then we won't. And same thing with the right axis. And again, we normalize it here, so we move uh, for the same amount in each direction. We'll also need a vector 3 for gravity uh, vector. And I'll set it to be equal to vector 3.0. First, I want to apply the gravity. This is not something that's very performant, but it works. And it's just a quick thing that I came up with. So what we'll do is we'll check if controller. So if our character is grounded. So basically what I'll do is I'll check if we're not grounded. So basically we go to our character controller and check if we're standing on some kind of a surface. If we're not, that means that we're falling or flying or something in that case i want to go to gravity vector dot y and set it to be minus equal gravity we created the gravity variable before and now we just say minus equals gravity because we want to lower the character down and basically what i'll do is i'll just go controller dot move and then i'll say gravity vector times time dot delta time delta time just makes it so it works perfectly with all, all the frame rates you can go read about it in the API with just this code 
we'll, we will be able to just fall to the ground. And you can see, we fell to the ground, but we can't move yet because we haven't uh, done all the logic for that or the calculations. So basically, this allows you to use gravity. And now we'll just continue. So first we want to make sure that uh, desired move direction is not equal to zero. You can check that by saying desired move direction exclamation mark equals to vector 3.0 and vector 3.0 is a vector with all values of zero. And then we want to change the rotation of our characters. So transform that rotation is equal to transform that rotation is this variable right here transform and then rotation. We'll use quaternion.slurp for this and you can read it here, slurp basically spherically interpolates between A and B by T and the parameter T is uh, kind of the speed. So now we need to give it a rotation A, so the starting rotation which is our transform that rotation and then we, then we need to give it rotation that we want to have, the rotation we want to slurp between then we'll give it the quaternion dot look rotation, which is another function. So basically we want to look at something. Then we'll give it the desired move direction. So that's the direction we want to move in. So basically we rotate the player in that direction. So if we want to move right, we'll rotate the player to the right. If we want to move to the left, we'll rotate the player to the left. If we want to move backwards, we'll rotate the player backwards. And of course, if we want to move forward, we'll rotate the player forward. And then we need to also give it some kind of a speed value, so I'll just give it the rotation speed that we created before. Like this. And close it off. Now we need to calculate the speed that we, at which we want to move. And that will be a new variable called float. It will be a float and it will be target speed. That will be equal to movement speed times movement input dot magnitude basically we multiply the speed by the length of the vector and then we will set the current speed which is the speed we're going to move at we'll set it to be equal to mat f which is just kind of like mathematical functions and then we'll give it the smooth damp basically we want to move between a A float and a B float at some kind of speed. So we want to go from A to B with some kind of speed. Similar to what we did with slurp. So we want to go from current speed to target speed. And this part I don't really get, but I'm gonna just leave it in here because it seems to work. So you, pre uh, you set the ref keyword, which is kind of a reference keyword. If I'm not mistaken, if you want to read about it, there should be some documents online. And then we give it the uh, speed smooth velocity and speed smooth time. I'm not sure what this part does myself, but that Perdino actually explains it. If he doesn't explain it, 100% he knows what he's doing. So, And now we need to uh, move the player, same as we did with the gravity. So we'll just say controller.move. And then we'll move on the desired move direction. And we'll multiply it by current speed. And also time that delta time so it works with uh, all kind of frame rates. It works the same with all kinds of frame rate. And now I think we should be able to move our character but we shouldn't be able to use animations. And now if you try and move you can see that it moves very nicely. For some reason our character is kind of tilting in, in one direction, never move, and that's not something I want. Oh, okay, I realize what's the problem. So the problem is, uh, it's rotating our player around the y-axis, and that's not something we want. A very simple way to deal with this is just by going forward, that y is equal to zero, and right, that y is equal to zero. So now that we can move, we, we just want to go to the animator and uh, trigger these uh, things. So we have a movement speed value that controls the animation. And basically what we'll do is we'll go up down here and say animator.setFloat. We'll set the float. First we need to give it which float. So move 
meant speed. You just need to give it the same name as this. And then you need to set it to something. We'll set it to 0 0.5 times movement speed dot mag or movement input, sorry, dot magnitude. So the length of the vector. We'll give it speed smooth time and we'll give it the time dot delta time. So again, you can work with all sorts of frame rates. And this should work. This we're basically setting to uh, 0 0.5. And if you take a look, if we set it to 0 0.5 here, it should uh, play the walking animation. You can set it to 1, but we will do that later. But also we give it, we multiply by all sorts of things, so it doesn't happen instantly, but it happens over a certain amount of time. So it's a bit smoother. So it actually blends. And now if you play the game, you can see that it plays the uh, idle animation if you stand still. And now you can move the character, rotate. And it looks actually pretty good. So hopefully you enjoy this. Hopefully this helped you. Join me, join in next time and subscribe, like, tra -la -la. go follow my social media, you know, all that thing. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye bye.